Number 15. Joliet Beginning four generations ago, Joliet, the real human doll, cursed the daughters and mothers of the family who owned her. The cursed doll was passed down from mom to daughter. The daughter who owned the doll would then grow and play with Joliet, completely unaware that the curse of Joliet had transferred to them. As adults, the daughters then went on to have both a daughter and a son, but the son never survived, dying at three days old. Some believe it's the dead son's spirit that haunt the doll, cursing the daughters of those who follow. Wait, it gets creepier. The sound of many infants crying can be heard coming from the doll at night. At times, the doll screams a blood-curdling wail. Anna, one of Joliet's unfortunate owners, highlights how the curse has been passed along from mother to daughter before citing the origins of this curse. As I have been told by my mother, the cursed doll was given to my great-grandmother by a jealous friend when she was pregnant with her second child, a son who also died at three days old. Though the curse is apparent to Anna, she says the doll will remain in the loving care of the family as they mourn for their lost sons. She plans to hand Joliet down to her daughter someday. We have not tried to get rid of it because we know the souls of our lost sons are trapped inside and do not want them to come to any harm," she explains. The family has consulted psychics, mediums, clergy, and paranormal investigators for their insight about the cursed doll. All have told her that she's nuts, but she's certain that her family was meant to bear this curse and take care of the creepy, cursed Joliet forevermore. Before we go any further, do you have a fear of dolls? Let me know in the comments with a simple yes or no. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to like this video then thank you, because it really helps us out. Number 14. Patty Reed's Doll Patty Reed's doll is creepy, not because it's haunted, but due to the horrid things it's witnessed. In 1846, Patty Reed was eight when her family traveled, along with other pioneers, to California. The group with which she traveled was called the Donner Party. The Donner Party became trapped by snow along the expedition west, resulting in a quickly dwindling food supply. As many of the members began to starve to death, they started to eat everything they could get their hands on. Mice, bones, leather, and when the situation became desperate, others in the party. The entire Reed family managed to survive, which inevitably means they're cannibals. The cannibalism of this crossing is historic fact, and the doll witnessed it all. As they continued their journey, the Reeds lightened their load, telling their children to dispose of unneeded luggage and toys. Patty simply couldn't discard her doll, so she hid her under her poofy dress. When they arrived in San Jose, the Reed family led a normal and cannibal-free existence, but the doll still knows. Though it isn't believed to be haunted or cursed, the doll serves as a reminder of what the Reed family had to endure to get to California and the horrible choices they were forced to make, like eating other human beings in their party. The doll is on display in Sacramento at Sutter's Fort State Historical Park Museum. Number 13. Harold Harold, the haunted doll, has a long history. Manufactured out of water, plaster, and composite particles in the early 1900s, it's clear the doll has taken a beating. It's traveled the world and, believe me, it's seen a few things, and likely caused a few problems for owners. Many have reported changes in facial expression, movements, and strange voices, as well as strong migraines, back pain, and strange injuries while in the ownership of this doll. Two people have reportedly died thanks to Harold. The doll was purchased on eBay by Anthony Quinata in 2004. The paranormal activity spooked Anthony, and he put the doll in storage for eight years. A paranormal investigation found that the words guilt and worry kept popping up, while voices, laughter, and screaming were heard coming from the doll. Some of those who were investigating the doll became seriously ill, others grew disoriented, and some felt as though they were under attack. The doll is believed to have an evil entity inhabiting it. Number 12. Annabelle Most people wouldn't find a Raggedy Ann doll skin-crawlingly creepy. That is, until they've seen The Conjuring and found that the disturbing doll, Annabelle in the movie, who was one of Ed and Lorraine Warren's possessed items, was actually based on a real doll. The real Annabelle was much less menacing, but she still managed to spook the hell out of a family in the 1970s. A mother bought her college-aged daughter, Donna, the Annabelle doll from a hobby store. Over time, Donna and her roommate noticed that the doll had changed positions on its own. They thought it was just all in their heads until a few weeks later. They left their shared apartment and, upon their return, found the doll had moved all the way from the couch to the bed. Lou, one of their friends, began to suggest the doll was disturbed, but Donna and her roommate would somehow justify its strange behavior. Then, one day, Donna started to find scraps of parchment paper around the house. Help Lou, the scrap sometimes read. 
help us. No one in the house owned parchment paper. When the girls didn't help, Annabelle was found in Donna's bed one day with blood oozing from her hands. Donna finally snapped and brought in a medium. The medium felt the doll's aura and told them that a field had once been in the place of Donna's apartment complex. Annabelle Higgins, a young girl, had been discovered dead in the field, and her spirit remained there. When the doll entered the complex, Annabelle's spirit entered it. The girl's spirit trusted Donna and felt safe with her. Donna was relieved, but prematurely. Lou began having nightmares about the doll choking him, and he'd wake up terrified. Several days later, when he visited the girls, Angie and Lou heard noises in Donna's room. They thought there was an intruder. Lou threw the door open and found Annabelle sitting still in a corner. He entered the room, and as he crept toward the doll, he felt like someone was behind him. He turned around and found no one, but suddenly his chest was searing. Lifting his shirt, claw marks were raked across his chest. He suspected Annabelle. Finally, they contacted an Episcopalian priest, who then directed them to Ed and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens found a demon was clinging to the doll, but its intention was to possess Donna's soul. A priest was brought in to perform an exorcism, and the Warrens took the doll away, but the demon had not left the doll. At the Warrens, it began levitating, disappearing and reappearing in various rooms. They attempted another exorcism, but it failed, and so they locked Annabelle in a case where she lives to this day. Number 11, Voodoo Zombie Doll. In October 2004, an unfortunate woman from Texas bought a voodoo zombie doll from New Orleans on eBay. The voodoo doll was tied up in a metal box. The unsuspecting woman pried it from its box in order to display the doll. When she did, it attacked her. The woman was frightened for her life, so she reattached it inside the small doll coffin. But then, it began to enter her dreams. She was so on edge about the skin-crawlingly creepy doll that she burned it intending to destroy it. The doll was immune to fire. She then tried to chop it up with a knife, but the knife broke. Finally, she thought she had the answer, bury the demon doll in a graveyard where it belonged. But no, even that didn't work. The doll managed to emerge from the shallow grave and crawl to her front doorstep. She decided her best bet was to pass along the voodoo doll to another buyer. She resold it on eBay, sent it to the buyer's home, but a short time later, the doll had disappeared. The woman found it, again, on her doorstep. She sent it again, but the buyer said the box had been empty upon arrival. Again, the doll had vanished, only to return to the woman's doorstep. She wasn't the only one to have dealt with this strange antics of this haunted voodoo doll. The eBayer who had sold it to her said that the voodoo zombie doll was truly alive. The seller warned buyers to beware, saying that whoever bought the doll shouldn't even open the silver case it was housed in. The doll was to be kept hidden away. The woman thought this so-called warning was to be heeded at her own discretion. The new ghost hunter had hoped to investigate the piece and document its paranormal activities in order to write a book about sending ghosts through the post. When she tried to contact the New Orleans seller, no one responded. She returned the doll to sender, but the shipment showed up yet again on her doorstep. A note attached read that the recipient was deceased. Finally, she sought a priest to rid the voodoo doll of its evil spirit. The priest blessed the box, but the possessed zombie spirit held fast inside. Its owner stowed the doll away in its silver case, locked in her attic, where it's remained for more than two years. Number 10. The Pulau Uban Barbie Although this doll may not be skin crawling, the supernatural powers believed to be bestowed upon it certainly are creepy. Pulau Uban, in Malaysia, houses this strange Barbie doll idol bedecked with a necklace, a bracelet, and a garland inside a temple that's 117 years old. People from all over flock to worship there each week. The supernatural powers this Barbie has bestowed with include healing powers and providing worshippers with vast fortunes. Before we go into all that, first, the temple. There are two different versions of how the German girl shrine was established. One claims that before World War II, a German couple lived on the island, and the man was enlisted in the army and was forced to leave. Somehow, the couple's daughter was abandoned there. When Japanese soldiers invaded, she hid in a cave, where she was later found dead from starvation. A shrine was set up in her remembrance by villagers there. A second story claims that the girl's German parents were captured by Japanese soldiers in World War II, and though the girl escaped, she didn't live long. She fell from a cliff to her death. The villagers then set up the shrine to appease her spirit. More than six years ago, an urn used to sit upon the altar of the German girl shrine. But when a resident of the island had a recurring dream about a Barbie doll, the urn was replaced. The man's dream, which occurred three days in a row, 
involved a Caucasian girl guiding him to a store in order to buy a Barbie doll. The girl directed him to the doll and told him to put her on the shrine's altar. The man almost brushed the dreams off, but he found the store from his dreams in reality, and when he entered the store, the dream Barbie doll was there, appearing the exact same as in the dream. He bought the doll and went to the shrine. That's when droves of women came to worship. And what do Barbie's worshippers offer in return for wealth, health, and success? Perfumed water, nail polish, lipstick, and cosmetics. I suppose any Barbie, even a supernatural one, is a bit superficial. Each and every weekend, worshippers, mostly middle-aged women, come to the temple to pray in front of the doll. On the doll's anniversary, 40 to 50 worshippers attend, both native Malaysians and tourists. Attendees pray for various things, wealth, healing, and success. Some ask the Barbie to bless the holy perfumed water in order to heal body aches and pains. Some worshippers report that their prayers have been granted by the supernatural Barbie. Number 9. Tickle Me Homicidal Elmo Tickle Me Elmo was a big hit more than a decade ago, with many parents selling their souls in order to get their hands on one of the stuffed dolls for Christmas. One family, the Bowmans, did just that, and boy, did they regret it. The doll was an Elmo Knows Your Name doll, in which you can program in your child's name, so that when connected to a computer, the child's name will be inserted into the doll's many preset phrases. After the programmable doll ran out of power, a new set of batteries was installed. This is when Evil Elmo suddenly became homicidal. Kill James, the red stuffed doll repeated over and over again when his little belly was squeezed. It was as though the doll was threatening its two-year-old owner, James Brown. It's not something that really you would think would ever come out of a toy, Melissa Bowman, James' mother said. But once I heard, I was just kind of distraught. Melissa noticed right away what the demon doll was saying, and her son, James, kept repeating the words, Kill James, Kill James. Elmo, being James's favorite character, was something of a role model to the boy. James even wore Elmo slippers, so when the doll began erratically declaring a death sentence, Melissa quickly took him away. This is his absolute favorite toy, she said, so we've been going through a lot of hassle because he's trying to climb up the counter and up to the closets to get it. The toy's manufacturer, Fisher Price, said they would provide the Bowmans a replacement and would investigate the issue to see if there were other malfunctioning Elmos out there. With the issue resolved, James went on to love his dear friend and mentor Elmo once again. But one thing's for sure, Sesame Street has never been so scary. Number 8. Papa, the Haunted Doll A paranormal investigator, with a focus on haunted dolls and doll items, has declared Papa, the doll, is in fact haunted. Some children have wild imaginations. They think their dolls are their friends. Some might even blame a misdeed on one of their very own friends. But what happens when the blame is warranted? What happens when a doll comes to life and terrorizes its owner and the home's inhabitants? Papa wasn't a terror, but she was creepy. Not only did she move of her own accord, inside her display case, she would push things around in there too. When Papa's original owner passed away in 2005, the haunted doll became even more lively and seemed to want freedom from its display. Papa's family claimed she would move and tap on the glass from inside her display case, and when someone who was walking by would take notice of the noise, they'd turn to find the doll's hand placed next to the glass, or she would be in a different position than she was a moment before. The doll was made to look like the spitting image of its Italian owner as a child. This is a tradition in certain parts of Italy, and sometimes the doll is even made with the child's real hair, or real hair that was sold to the doll maker. Papa was of the latter group. The doll's owner had Papa from the time she was 5 or 6 in the late 1920s to the day she died in 2005. Like its owner, the doll was a World War II survivor. It could have been destroyed on many occasions, and Papa was a world traveler too, crossing the Atlantic to America and back to Italy again to tour Europe before returning to the States. Papa's owner claimed the doll had a mind of her own. The doll had been her best friend, and she told her grandchildren that Papa had spoken to her and at one point saved her life. The paranormal investigator confirmed the liveliness of the doll, claiming that it changed position by itself and even changed the expression on its face. The doll's eyes seemed to follow a person around the room. They also widened or narrowed according to her state of mind. A best friend and confident in doll form, creepy and sweet at the same time. Number 7. Letta, the Gypsy Doll What would you expect to discover below an ancient, secluded, haunted house? Bones? A dungeon? or say a hand-carved gypsy doll. Well, Carrie Walton found a 200-year-old one, and, as one might expect, the doll was haunted. 
In fact, the spirit inhabited by the doll threw those who looked upon it into hysterics. Walton was in his early 20s when he went home for a funeral in Wagga Wagga. He'd long had a lingering fear about the purportedly haunted house which was located down the street. He decided to face his childhood fear and entered the house in the dead of night. In the house's cellar, Carrie found a trap door. He opened it and, through a great amount of dust, he lit the darkness with his flashlight. He was crawling below, walking around the house's supports, when suddenly he spotted a pair of eyes staring at him, set deep in the face of a dead child, or at least that's what it appeared to be. The old marionette was skin crawlingly creepy, but Carrie tucked it under his arm and raced out of the house. When he got home, he laid it on the lounge and headed to bed, but he couldn't stop thinking about the creepy doll. He bagged the doll and put it under the house. Carrie wanted to sell Letta, but at the last minute broke the deal with his buyer, realizing the doll had a special hold on him. He wanted to learn more about it. He took the doll to a museum, who told him that the nails used in the doll's construction placed the doll at 200 years old and that its style was Eastern European. The creepy marionette had human hair, and a fake brain was found under its scalp. Carrie then took the doll to some psychics. One told him that the doll was carved by a doll maker in the likeness of his deceased son, who drowned at six years old. As mentioned before, dolls sometimes hold onto the soul of their owners after death. This particular marionette was said to contain the soul of a young boy. Letta Me Out is the doll's full name, Letta for short. Although the child's soul doesn't seem to be malicious, that doesn't stop people and animals from fleeing from it. Letta's eyes seem fearful and sad, leaving dogs to bark hysterically and viewers to gasp aloud. When held, Letta is said to sometimes feel as though he is pulsing, and like many of the haunted dolls on this list, he also moves on his own. Number 6. Crystal, True, Monica, Sharla, Isaac, Lily, Ashley, and Cameron. This truly creepy clan of possessed porcelain dolls belongs to a rural Pennsylvania family who are also paranormal investigators. Having purchased the haunted dolls purposefully, it's no wonder that they are set up with a camera monitoring them to catch their every move. The owners love on the dolls, but also examine them. By setting up a camera directed at the dolls 24-7, the clan's strange happenings are recorded. Some say that in 2009, the apparition of a little boy appeared on the bottom step. Other than that, they've been known to move on occasion. Watch carefully, and you may see other creepiness occur. Number 5. Mandy What's so special about Mandy? In 1991, this antique doll made a home at Quinsel Museum. With a torn body, dirty clothing, a cracked head, and not much else, the 90-year-old Mandy looked as though she'd seen better days. Mandy was granted strange powers, particularly in her ability to emit the sound of a crying baby. The doll's late owner said that she'd wake up in the middle of the night to the sound of a crying baby from downstairs, and when she went to investigate, a window would be left open with a curtain breezily blowing. When she donated the doll to the museum, the sound stopped. But now, the doll is causing mischief at the museum, missing lunches which reappear in other bizarre places, missing pens, pictures, and books, and unexplainable footsteps. The doll's cracked face and eerie smile scared visitors away when it was placed in the entryway, causing staff to move the doll to its own separate case in the event that Mandy would destroy other dolls. Visitors to the museum claim that the doll's eyes follow them and even blink. Others claim that they had trouble with their camera near the doll's display, but when they left it, their camera became good as new. Something fishy's going on here. Number 4. The Devil Baby of Bourbon Street As Marie Laveau, the voodoo queen became a rising star. Her clientele went from country folk and people of color to wealthy Creoles and Americans. As she served, she found herself in an elaborate Dauphine Street mansion where she would meet the family's beautiful young daughter, Camille. Camille was faced with many Creole suitors. It wasn't until she ventured into the American Quarter where she met Scotsman Mackenzie Bowes, a man of purportedly old money and obscene wealth. Camille fell in love, and Bowes seemed to as well. But one of Camille's Creole suitors, Etienne Lofasat Matou, wasn't about to let go that easy. Matou arrived at Marie Laveau's cottage and asked the voodoo queen if he could get Camille back. When she insisted he could not, he replied, Then I want her dead. Laveau responded that he would pay dearly for such a request. He responded that the queen should make her suffer, like she has made me suffer. The voodoo queen sent Matou to retrieve some things to produce the proper curse. Camille was married to her Scotsman in October, and New Orleans High Society all showed up at the wedding and reception. All except Marie Laveau, who was at work creating her curse. The happy new bride returned from their honeymoon pregnant, and they began their life on Rue Bourbon near the French market. Camille began planning the nursery they would build for their new addition. Bose and Camille's mother, Adelaide, began having terrible nightmares. 
Bose would bolt up in the middle of the night crying out for Camille, but he wouldn't ever describe to her his dream. Adelaide decided to seek the help of Marie Laveau to determine what these dreams meant. The voodoo queen told Adelaide that the unborn child was at stake, and she should be the one to deliver the child on her own. Laveau claimed Bose had something dark within him, and the man truly had always been a mystery to everyone. Adelaide agreed that Laveau should be Camille's midwife. When contractions began, Laveau was sent for. The labor was tough, but the voodoo queen served as a good midwife. As the baby neared delivery, Bose grew more nervous and argued with Laveau that he must be in the delivery room. The voodoo queen would not be convinced. He couldn't take it anymore and raced off into the night, just as Camille passed away in labor. Laveau consoled the family by saying the child had survived, but there was a curse upon him. The demon baby in Laveau's arms made the entire room gasp in horror. In place of hair were two lumps as if horns were about to come through the child's head. The baby had claws for hands and feet and scales all over his body. The eyes of the baby were like two burning hellfires. None of the family wanted the child and Bose, having gone mad, was in no position to take his son. So Marie Laveau went off with the child. On the way home, she spotted Etienne Mathieu, hunching in the shadows. He had become deformed and crippled with a face as ugly as sin. The voodoo queen had said Mathieu would regret taking Camille's wife, and so he did. Although this story makes no mention of a doll, it did inspire one artist to make this skin-crawlingly creepy doll on the devil baby's imagined likeness. Number 3. Robert the Doll The infamous Chucky doll is based on a true story. Author and painter Robert Eugene Otto claims that his nurse put a voodoo curse on one of his dolls, and the script of Child's Play is a loose reinterpretation of this haunted doll's story. The real cursed doll, also known as Robert the Enchanted Doll or Robert the Haunted Doll, is at the center of ghost tours in the Key West region. Robert has woolen or yarn hair and is dressed like an American sailor from the early 1900s. Otto received the doll from a family servant in 1906. The servant was said to have wanted to damage the Otto family. Skilled in black magic, he seemed to have done just that. Neighbors claimed to have seen the doll through the windows, traveling from room to room when no one was home. Eugene's parents heard him talking to the doll, and when the Ottos left their family home, those who moved in were haunted by the doll as well. When Eugene died, the young daughter of the family spotted Robert in her room at night. The girl said his intent was to kill her. Sound familiar? Although Chucky doesn't at all resemble Robert, he is certainly equally as creepy. Child's Play is the first installment in the series of slasher films, in which a mother gifts her son a doll which is possessed by the soul of a famed Chicago serial killer. The man's evil soul enters the doll after he is killed in a shootout with homicide detective Mike Norris in a toy shop. When the doll is gifted to the boy, Andy, the boy's babysitter is killed that night. She falls out a window after being slammed in the face with a hammer, and Andy is suspected by the police. The next day, he is ordered by Chucky to go downtown because the serial killer wants to pay a visit to Eddie, one of the killer's so-called friends who'd abandoned him. The doll turns up the gas on the stove and messes with Eddie until he takes a shot at the stove, causing an explosion. Andy is, again, suspected of the murder and is put into a mental hospital. Through a series of events, Chucky discovers that he must escape the doll body and possess the first person who was told about him, Andy. While Mike and Andy's mother discover that the serial killer's soul can be destroyed via a fatal injury to the heart. After a lot of violence and many false death scenes, Mike finally shoots Chucky in the heart, killing the soul of the serial killer. Or so we're led to believe, until the next installment. Number 2. The Doll in the eBay Haunted Painting This edition is not so much a doll as it is a work of art, containing a doll. A haunted painting sold on eBay is said to instill fear, screaming, and sickness in all who look upon it. The painting, the painting just so happens to depict a skin-crawlingly creepy doll. Bill Stoneham, the artist behind the creepy painting, entitled it The Hands Resist Him. Painted in 1972 is resold on eBay. Painted in 1972 is recently sold on eBay in 2000 with a dire warning about owning the cursed artworks. The Hands Resist Him is considered to be one of the most haunted pieces of art in the world. In the painting, the creepy doll is stood next to a child before a glass door. Past owners claim that the painting's figures move around in the frame at night. At times, they vanish entirely from the canvas. Some even claim that the boy creeps into the room where the painting is hung. Those who look upon the painting feel weak, while others feel a blast of hot air or unseen hands grabbing onto them. Children run away screaming from the painting. Some say prints can't even be made of the painting, while others claim that a simple online viewing leaves them feeling sick with horror. The painting's creator was surprised to hear all this. An art gallery that hung the piece told him that it was under paranormal investigation, but all Stoneham did was add to the mystery by allowing that two of the painting's reviewers had passed away not even a year after viewing the disturbingly haunted piece. Number 1. Okiku Doll This decades-old doll has been the center of creepiness in Japan. 
as it is said to be possessed by a child's spirit. Okiku's namesake is the child who used to own the doll, which wears a kimono and has hair that grows. The Menenji Temple in Iwamisawa has been home to the Okiku doll since 1938. The temple claims that the doll's hair was traditionally short and cropped, but it's grown down to the doll's knees despite the fact that it receives frequent trims. In 1918, the doll was purchased by Ikichi Suzuki, who bought it for his two-year-old sister, Okiku, as a souvenir. Okiku adored the doll, but sadly, she died of a cold the next year. The family, besought with grief, put the doll atop the altar in their home and prayed to it always. Before long, the doll's hair had started growing. While the growth of the doll's hair is a mystery to this day, the family took it as a sign that Okiku was alive in the doll. When the family moved in 1938, they gave the doll to the temple, which has been its home since.